Now, when I was a kid back in high school or even elementary school, I would spend hours and hours on YouTube after school watching FIFA videos. I used to watch KSI, Road to Shaw, Chris MD, all these YouTubers, but they mostly provided entertainment value. So my mind has been trained to associate YouTube with entertainment. However, YouTube is also an exceptional educational platform, and I've been trying to use it more as that instead of just getting entertainment out of it. And it's been really hard to shift that mindset into YouTube is really focused on learning new things. So I basically had to retrain my mind. Hey everyone, I'm Steven, a student and maker at the University of Waterloo studying software engineering. On here, I make a variety of videos on engineering, tech, and personal development. Today, I wanted to share with you strategies that I've implemented to watch YouTube more productively, specifically to learn new things by using tools like Notion. And I hope that by sharing my experience with you, you can benefit from it and try to implement it in your own day-to-day -day life. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, before we even go into the strategies, I think it's really important to explain why I even go on YouTube to learn. Because there are so many other platforms specifically designed for education, such as EDX, Coursera, and Udemy. And these are all amazing platforms. Coursera and EDX, for example, have courses that are taught by university professors. So why on earth would you choose YouTube to learn things? And I would say to this actually that for the vast majority of people, for the vast majority of disciplines, EDX and Coursera these other platforms might be a much better choice if you're trying to get started in things like programming, business, philosophy, history, and all these other interesting disciplines. But for me, I'm specifically interested in mechanical and electrical engineering. So I did try to follow a few courses taught by these university professors. But what I found was that the concepts that I was learning was very dense, it was very math heavy, and it wasn't very practical for the kinds of projects I wanted to work on. And so for that reason, I didn't really find those courses relevant. I didn't see myself spending two hours a day watching these lectures and completing homeworks, only to know that I'm never gonna apply these things in my own imminent projects. And that's actually the reason I'm choosing to pursue software engineering at university and not mechanical or computer or electrical engineering. It's because the kind of projects I envisioned myself doing didn't quite fit what I was gonna learn through the university curriculum and I just felt like I could use my own spare time to learn those concepts. And so I turned to YouTube and I found a bunch of really awesome YouTubers and they were teaching me really useful concepts in short amounts of time. And with YouTube, I also get to see people working on projects and walking me through their thought process. I get to see how people tackle problems. And so for that reason, YouTube was really compelling to me. And once I found those YouTubers, I decided that YouTube would be that platform to learn engineering for me. So the strategies I offer in this video are very specific to YouTube, but please consider the other platforms I mentioned before diving only into YouTube because I'm sure that these other platforms also offer their pros. But in this video, I wanted to specifically go into how we can use YouTube as a tool for learning. The first thing I did was to get rid of all the useless subscriptions I had. I used to have over 100 subscriptions on my old account, but because there were so many channels I was subscribed to, I didn't really feel like using the subscriptions tab anymore because there were so many irrelevant channels to me. For instance, I wasn't playing FIFA anymore, but I was still subscribed to those YouTubers. So taking the time to clean out your subscriptions and really only subscribing to those that you think are relevant to you is an important step, especially if you've been using YouTube for a super long time. So on here, the only subscriptions I have are good YouTubers I find who can teach me the concepts I need to understand, like the Engineering Mindset or Great Scott or Electro Noob, and they teach either mechanical or electrical engineering. And I found that to be super helpful and to get rid of all these distractions that appear on my feed. And I no longer use the Home tab nor the Explore tab. I just rely on my Subscriptions tab if ever I'm looking for new things to learn. Sometimes I also like to go into a specific channel, like let's say the engineering mindset, and say I'd like to learn about how Voltage works, well, I can directly find it on their channel. Because some channels are really project-based and some channels are very tutorial-based. And there's pros and cons to both of them. So for example, the engineering mindset is a channel that's rather theoretical. So they teach a lot of theoretical concept, but we don't get to see that in practice. Whereas something like How to Mech Mechatronics is a channel that's really project-based. You learn different things from these channels. Um, you need to understand from a theoretical level how things work, 
But seeing it in application, like for example, in this scour bot, I learned about like different types of bearings that they used. So I'm gonna put in the description some links to my favorite channels, but I want you to go out there and explore on your own, look for engineering channels or whatever topic you are interested in learning, whether it's in arts or in business, there's for sure channels out there. You just have to dig for the right one and find one that suits your learning needs and style. So once you've done that, you should have around like 20, 30 different channels. And then now I'm gonna to talk to you about how I, I use Notion. I don't watch YouTube videos directly on YouTube. What I do is I actually use Notion. If you don't know what Notion is, Notion is a knowledge management platform. Uh, so what it does is it basically think of it like Google Docs, but like to the next level. It's insane how much customization you can have. You, you can have blocks, you can have tables, you can have to-do lists. There's virtually everything on Notion you could do. So I built a sort of table on Notion and each row of the table represents a YouTube video. Let me show you. So on here, you can see that each row is a video. And if you expand a certain video, you can see that it opens up as a new page and I have the video embedded in it. And below it, I actually take notes on the video. The reason I take notes is to actively learn about the material, right? So instead of just passively watching something, when you take notes, you're actively engaging with the material and that helps you retain information better. I don't have to manually do this every time. Like I don't have to manually write the title, put the link, you know, cause that, that's, that's a lot of work, right? So thankfully Notion actually has this really useful function. Let's say there's this video about precision holes. So I open that and this is a video that's pretty interesting. So I want to watch it. Instead of watching it directly, what I do is I click on this Notion extension at the top right, which I've installed from the Chrome web store. Uh, I can save this as a page by adding it to the relevant page. So for me, the table is called the media table. So I click that and I save it to the page. And once I do that, you can see that on Notion, it updates automatically. So there's a new row, right? Because I just added it to the table. And if I open it, you can see that the video is directly embedded in it. This is how I watch my YouTube videos and I take notes there. Precision right? doors and holes are some of these I have to still manually type it in, like the creator and the type of video it is. So most of them are YouTube videos. This video is about YouTube videos, but you can use this table really for anything like books or like podcasts you listen to. And as well, like when you when you use it from here, you're, you're, not, you're not distracted by the sidebar of like the recommendations, like what to watch next. You can just laser sharp focus on that video. All right, let me give you a quick rundown of what each of these columns mean. So the first thing is the type of the content. So uh, we have YouTube video, which is our main option here, but there's other options like articles, books, podcasts. So if you want to take notes for those things as well, you can do it here. Uh, next, we have the name. So this is the name in our case of the YouTube video. These are automatically generated by the Notion extension we've installed whenever we use it. Next, we have the status. So this is your personal status with that video. So have you not started watching it? Are you watching it? Or have you finished watching that video? And there's also an option called to review. And this option just basically means that I need to review the video multiple times. And this is oftentimes because the video is quite dense in material, such as let's say this one on transistors has the to review status. And this is because transistors are, is not a simple topic. So a lot of the things he talks about in here, it is quite difficult to understand. So I need to watch it multiple times. This is the date viewed, pretty self-explanatory. We have the creator as well, very self-explanatory. Then we have the score. So this is a, a subjective score that you assign to a video. So if you really enjoyed it, then you would give it a five star rating. But if you don't enjoy it as much, you can give it a one star. Uh, next, we have the tags. So these are, are tags that I've created myself. You can customize these based on your own needs. But um, the tags, the creator, uh, the score, the status, all of these different columns are created to, to help me more easily find the videos I need. Uh, and finally, we have the difficulty. So this is the difficulty of a video. The difficulty is also pretty subjective. It's how difficult a video is to understand. And this is not necessarily because the presenter is bad, but rather dependent on the content of the video. So again, the transistor one was relatively hard for me to understand because there was so much theory. So I have to watch it multiple times, but this just helps me understand that. And finally, we have the creation time and the link to the YouTube video. All of these are pretty self-explanatory. The creation time is auto-generated and the link is also auto-generated by the Notion Web Clipper. And the idea behind this is like it takes four years, five years. You know, if you watch just one video a day, 
you know, in five years, you're gonna have what, like two, 2,000 different videos on here. Think about how much knowledge that is that you've absorbed. Us humans, we're, we're pretty bad with memory, right? So if ever you forget about something, you can specifically pinpoint it on this notion table. So let's say I'm working on a project and I'm trying to figure out how gears work. If I type gear, I can see all these videos I've watched about gears and there's plenty of, of gears, right? So let's say it's a specific gear like the herringbone gear. Um, and there's this one, I haven't watched them yet, but I would watch this one. And, and if I had like a five star score you know, on this one, then I know this is the good video I should revisit it to refresh my mind. So that's how I use Notion as a tool. If you want to make your own table, um, you can go and create a new one. And there's actually a template here. Go under personal and... Uh, the next three minutes of this video consists of me trying to explain to you how to create your own Notion table. But let's be honest here, why would you want to follow along when I can simply give you a link to duplicate my page? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Go check out the description for my template and you can thank me by subscribing, giving a like to this video and commenting. That's about it. Um, I hope you guys... So that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. So that's about it. I hope you guys learned a couple of things today on my own system on using YouTube. This is obviously a continuous process. It's not the end all be all, but it's a system that's been working really well for me. And so I hope this was useful to you. And let me know in the comments if you have your own sort of system. If so, let me know in the comments because I'm eager to learn from you guys as well. But that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I will see you next time.